Okay, so we continue. Now we're going to read from the database and we're going to replace these dummy um, users with um, some actual users. Okay, so let's go to our um, folder here and I'm going to go to includes. Now, of course, the images are in uh, UI images right here. Now, because our users don't have images, we're going to use placeholders here. There's user male and user female. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep that in mind. So of course, we're going to go into the includes folder because the contacts file is what we are looking for. So let me open that up. Now, if you remember very well, we have this classes folder where we have the database, okay? So this database class is included. So let me open that as well. We included this using the autoload because the autoload includes this. And the autoload is included in the index.php. No, not actually the index.php, but the api.php right there. Okay. So now we included it in the api.php and then we created a new db, which is uh, which we assigned to the variable db. So we have to keep in mind that this DB is available for us to use in any of these files that we're including right here, which is awesome. Okay, so now what methods do we have in DB that we can actually utilize? So let's go to the database class. So this is the class right here. And um, let's look at what's going on in here. So we have the function write okay and then we have the read function okay so now what we want to use is the read and so we have to supply a query and then we have to supply a data array pretty straightforward okay so let's do that right here now here we repeated these uh, contacts this contact one and two and three but because of the power of computers we don't need to repeat ourselves we can simply loop through this thing so i'm going to delete all these two here so that i remain with only one of these like this okay pretty good but this div right here doesn't need to be repeated this is the div that covers all of the contacts so we can loop through this but not this so in order to do that let's break away from our data so everything uh, we are supposed to collect here should go into this variable because this is the variable we are returning here all right so at this point we're assigning my data to this so let's end it right there so let's put our or oh, it's actually a single quote and we do that to end everything here and so we have to concatenate so let's get this Boop. push this down and do that put our columns like so and then break it over right here now instead of assigning an equal sign here we have to add to what already exists so what we do is before the equal sign we put a full stop that's it so we are adding to it and let's do exactly the same thing to the final part down here so there we go, well and good. So we are assigning to this, adding some more content and adding some more. However, here we're going to create a loop so that we can add more content. So let's do that right now. And I'm going to add a for loop right here. So just as an example, so we're going to say for, okay. So this is a weird for loop i is equal to zero i less than uh, okay works for me so let's put 10 for example there just as an example so let me move the closing loop thingy here and let me push this inside there like so we can remove the assistant there so four and there we go and there so we're adding every time. So let's uh, see that in action. Let me refresh the page, click contacts, and there we go. So we have all these contacts right here. 
Now, instead of just generating a loop like that, we have to get actual data from here, which is pretty easy. So let's do that here at the top. So we're going to say we have that DB already uh, accessible and we're just going to say DB read. And of course, we're going to give it a query. I'm going to just call the query SQL like so and comma and we're going to supply an array of values now since we are not looking for a very specific thing we're just going to supply an empty array like so like that now we need to send this data somewhere so we're going to assign it to a value code um, users something like this okay and just in case we have users being used somewhere we're just going to say my users just to keep it different so my users is equal to that. Now, if we don't return anything here, um, I still want this data to contain that, okay? And that, because this is just the container. But in case it doesn't, it didn't return any data, we can omit this part right here. So that's why we're going to put an if statement right here and say if, um, what are we actually returning here? I'm forgetting what we are returning. Uh, we are fetching an object. Okay, so we're going to return an object. Right, okay. So let me go back here. And if is, actually it returns an array, the array of objects. So we're going to say if is array, my users like so. If it's an array, everything went well. So let's open, close like that, and let's wrap everything inside that. Push everything over like so. So if this is an array, well and good. So let's do a for each right here. So we're going to say for each like so. And we're going to paste that my users for each as row like that okay so i won't be needing this since i have that already and i'm going to remove that code right there so what we're doing is we are asking if this is an array which means uh, everything was found uh, th there was at least some data found and then we're going to loop through the data and do that so before I change anything here, I'm just going to show you that this actually works and let's refresh our page. And it definitely didn't work. All right. So we have to ask ourselves, but why? So there we go. Read SQL. Oh, of course, we didn't provide the SQL. So let's create the SQL here and say select or from users just that so if you want to limit uh, how many users you want to retrieve you're going to say limit a certain number maybe 10 and we're going to look at how to limit and how to offset meaning how to go to the next page and so on in a later video for now this is enough like so so select all from users limit 10 and so uh, there we go so let's test it again fresh page and there we go so three names here of course we know it's working because there are three items here but let's retrieve actual data from those components so let me come back here for example on the name we need to supply an actual name so i'm just going to get this row right here and put it here now the issue is we are using single quotes on the outside and double quotes on the inside which i don't really like during because uh, it creates uh, if you put single quotes on the outside and then let's say i put something like row and i want to retrieve uh the what is it called here is it the username uh, there we go that's the username so if i want to retrieve username something like this this is not going to work it's just going to show me this as a string so i can prove that to you right now if i refresh and do that so you see a raw username your code comes in there however if i use double quotes on the outside it's going to evaluate this thing right here 
okay so that's why i prefer double quotes on the outside but i put single quotes because we are using double quotes in here so of course i just need to change these double oops i went too far let me select all these guys right here delete them and add single quotes that way i can add another double quote on the outside so now i'm using double quotes like this so it's going to evaluate that name if i refresh and do that again you see that now i get actual names awesome but now i know that uh, the images don't actually exist let me uh all right so we need an if statement right here but we can do the if statement at the top here so what we do is let's create a variable called image and say it's equal to uh, empty string like so however we check if a file exists in the in the record so we're going to say if raw image then we're going to assign the image to the row, like so. Image is equal to row image. Copy and paste, like so. Goody. But then we are checking if this file exists. So I'm going to cover this in parentheses, like so, or brackets, and say file exists. So we are checking oh that's the correct one oops it adds its own stuff there okay so if file exists that one then set it to that however if it doesn't we're going to copy this as a dummy and put it there so instead of using this one we're going to say user uh, mail hmm now the thing is, we have two genders here, there's male and female, so let's check for that as well. So let's use that um, that if statement, that if, which is straightforward. So let's, let, let me ask this question here, let me copy this part instead. So I'm going to say equals, then we're going to put a condition here and put a question mark. So if the condition is true, we're going to set image to this. However, if it is false, full colon, word wrap, oh, see, uh, the preferences here keep changing every time I open and close this. Now, if you are annoyed by that, you can simply change the preferences, and I actually don't know how to, where is this? I'm getting sidetracked here. You, where are the preferences? Hmm. Settings, there we go. So the settings are for coders like this. So if there's a setting you're looking for, just search for it here. Like for example, it's word wrap that I'm looking for. Yeah, there we go. So word wrap here says, uh, let me zoom out, word wrap auto. So it can be true or false. Now I want it to be false continuously. So I'm going to copy everything here and paste it down here. So I'm going to put a comma, paste it there, remove that last comma, and I'm going to say uh, false, like so, and save that. So that's how you save settings here. Let me close that, goody. Okay, so back to coding. So if the condition we're going to put here is true, we're going to set it to male. If not, we're going to set it to female. Now, these are the images that are in here, in UI images. There's user female and user male. Those are the placeholders. Okay, so user male, user female. So the condition here, of course, we're going to ask if this user is male so that when it is true, we assign a male JPEG, if not a female one. So we're going to say if, there we go. It's not image, but gender is equal to male, something like this, right? So if this is true, assign that, if not the other one. So this should work just fine. And then here on the source, we're going to 
add uh, image right there like so so moment of truth refresh click and there we go so you see it it's correct with the female the male male all right so so far so good we are reading uh from the database and we have our users right here so chat contacts settings and logout all right so so far so good we'll continue in the next video